Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? I hope everybody is doing absolutely fantastic. So you guys, today we're going to go over ACLS. Uh, we're gonna do it um, based on American Heart Association and for ACLS providers. So I want this to be like the type of video that like when you guys need a refresher or like if you're learning it for the first time, I want it to be simple. I want it to make sense to you guys, okay? So this is assuming that you're a medical provider who has a team this isn't first aid you you know just trying to save someone's life this is you as a medical provider with a team of help of helpers okay um so now you're gonna start off with the scene okay so the scene is that you have a patient who is pulseless so we're gonna start right there we're gonna start with pulse -less, okay the first thing you're gonna do with a pulseless patient is you're gonna be you're gonna begin or have a uh, have a team member begin compressions okay I'm gonna assume that you're the team leader that's what I'm gonna assume so you're gonna have someone begin compressions and then you're gonna have someone put the patient on oxygen and then you're gonna have someone put the patient on a monitor now the monitor is what's going to dictate the rest of your treatment algorithm. So you're going to let the monitor do its thing. You're going to let the monitor analyze the rhythm. When it does that, is the rhythm shockable? So I'm just going to write shockable. Shockable, question mark. So you're either going to go one of two ways, okay? If the rhythm is shockable, because that's a yes or no question right there, if the rhythm is shockable well you might be asking how do I even know shockable means that you have found the fib or pulseless V tack that means that your rhythm is shockable if your rhythm is not shockable what does that mean that means that let's put a no right here that means that you have found the patient to be in a systole rule of thumb Never shock asystole, ever, 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 ever. You will immediately fail if this is for testing purposes. If it's in real life, you'll cause a problem. People won't want to work with you no more. Stuff like that. So you never shock asystole. Now, we're going to focus on VFib and pulses VTAC, and then we'll do asystole afterwards. So let's go down this algorithm, okay? It, it is a very organized algorithm. You learn it, and, and you'll have it in your head for good. So when you find... V-fib or pulses VTAC. Listen very carefully. The first thing you do without delay is you shock this patient. You give a defibrillation because that is exactly what this patient needs right away, okay? Right away. So V-fib, pulses VTAC, you're gonna shock or, you know, we're gonna say defibrillate because we are grown adults over here. Okay, so we're gonna defibrillate our first dose of defibrillation is 200 joules now second rule of thumb is immediately after defibrillation this is a test question you guys and it's important for real life as well immediately after defibrillation you resume compressions no delay don't ever think twice about that that's how it goes okay defibrillation followed by compressions for two minutes obviously like I'm not gonna go into defibrillation I guess I could do that in another video but just keep in mind that when you set up for defibrillation you clear everybody hands off the patient otherwise you're shocking your whole team and then now you know what I mean you just don't want to do that you just don't do that okay you, you be a nice person and you make sure everyone has cleared off the patient now you're doing your compressions for two minutes I want you guys to think of something right here okay every single time for testing purposes and for real life when you are at the point in your algorithm where you are having compressions for two minutes I want that to be a trigger word for you for you to think I'm compressing for two minutes there's something else that I could be doing in the meantime you ha I want you guys to work on that you have to think that way so compressing for two minutes what could we be doing in the meantime we could be obtaining I'm gonna put in, in the meantime type of stuff, I'm going to put it in parentheses. We could be obtaining IV or IO access in the meantime. Okay? Um, now, what we're going to do at this point uh, 
is shock. Well, we're gonna let let it analyze the rhythm, okay? If it's shockable, I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna here we here we're gonna okay. Let's go. Shock, <laughs> shockable? Question mark. Meaning, is the patient still in V fib or pulses V tac? If yes, then yes, you do shock. And if you do shock, you don't shock at the last dose. We're gonna this time defibrillate at 300 joules. That is our second dose. Um, obviously, you guys, by the way, needless to say, please do check your own protocols for this because this is the way that I've been trained. But obviously, we should all know by now that things vary based on location of the world, based on, you know, what supplies you have available, stuff like that. So please do check your own protocols and testing material. But this is how I've been trained. So again, what do we do immediately after defibrillation? That should be another trigger for you. Defibrillate, resume compressions, okay? Do not forget that. So compressions for two minutes. Now, we're compressing for two minutes? There's something else that we could do. That's how, I want you guys to think that way, right? So compressing, uh, compressions for two minutes. What could we be doing at this point? At this point, let's go ahead and consider an advanced airway possibly intubating the patient, stuff like that. Um, also, we're gonna go ahead and begin trying to chemically induce life back into this patient because as you can see, we have attempted two shocks so far. We have attempted electricity to help this patient come back to life and it's not working. So we need to try something else. We are gonna try one milligram of epinephrine, one to 10,000, every three to five minutes. So at this point in our cardiac arrest algorithm, we should be having two separate timers, one for our two minutes of compressions and one designated timer for epinephrine every three to five minutes. This is how you can stay organized and this is how you can, you can maintain some sort of uh, rhythm, some sort of uh, clarity within all of this chaos. So you're gonna have this designated epinephrine three to five minute timer. Now what are you gonna do? Now you're gonna analyze the shock. Is it, is the rhythm shockable? I'm sorry, analyze the rhythm. Is the rhythm shockable? That's a question mark by the way. I, I'm so sorry, like I know that is very ugly for a question mark. So question mark, um, is the rhythm shockable? If it is, we're gonna defibrillate. This is going to be our final dose for defibrillation. It's not our final defibrillation, but this is the highest dose, meaning from this point and on, we are sticking to 360 joules of defibrillation, okay? Now we defibrillated at 360. What do we do? Resume compressions. So compressions for two minutes, okay? Whoa, we're compressing for two minutes. There's got to be something else we can do for this patient. In the meantime, what may that be? We're going to go ahead and try another drug, another medication, because clearly at this point, we, we, need, we need more help, right? So at this point, we're going to try amiodarone. Amiodarone. The dose for amiodarone, the first time that you give it during cardiac arrest, is 300 milligrams and we are also going to consider our reversible causes okay I'm gonna quickly brief you guys on reversible causes they're also known as our H's and T's I don't want this video to be too long but I'm, I'll just go through them very quickly so reversible causes means this is time for us as advanced medical providers to critically think our patient is in cardiac arrest maybe they're in cardiac arrest for a reason that we can reverse these are known as our reversible causes and there's five of them that begin with the letter H and five of them that begin with the letter T and that's why they're called H's and T's. So let's quickly go through them. Um, so our H's are gonna be right here and I'll put the T's right here. Your H's are gonna be hypothermia. So the patient's cold, hypothermia. 
hypovolemia. The patient is in cardiac arrest potentially because they are losing volume. Hypo or hyperkalemia. Hypo hypoxia. The patient is low on oxygen. Hydrogen ions. So the patient is in acidosis. Now our reversible T's. We have a pulmonary thrombus or a cardiac. I'm putting the T's really big so you know that that's why it's under T's because it's a thrombus. Um, tension, pneumo, thorax. I hope you're noticing as I'm going along that these are very reversible um, things going on here. Uh, cardiac, tamponade, again, very reversible, or toxins. These are our potential reversible causes. These are our H's and T's. So now let's go back to the, to the cardiac arrest algorithm for VFib and pulses VTAC. We're at the point where we have um, given our epinephrine, we've given our first dose of amiodarone, we've considered our reversible causes. We're gonna go ahead and um, analyze the rhythm again. Is it a rhythm that uh, should be defibrillated? If so, we're gonna defibrillate at 360 joules and we're going to immediately resume compressions. Like I said, that doesn't change. Resume compressions for two minutes. Now keep in mind, your epi is on its own timer every three to five minutes, okay? So now what could we be doing while we're compressing for, for two minutes? We've, uh, we've given like all these things, but we have not yet given our second and final dose of amiodarone, which is half the first dose. The second dose of amiodarone is 150 milligrams. This is our last dose of amiodarone. From this point forward, all we can do for this patient is defibrillate at 360 joules every, uh, is, is defibrillate at 360 joules and resume compressions for two minutes and give epi. That's all we can do for this patient. Epi is, is at a three to five minute timer. So, you know, that's on its own thing. But that's all you can do for this patient from now on. If the patient remains in VFib or pulses VTAC, that's all you can do. If they, uh, if they gain a pulse, that is something called ROSC, return of spontaneous circulation. I'm not going to go over that too much right now because I don't want this video to be too long, but very quickly, I just want you guys to think with ROSC, the first thing that you want is a 12 lead, you want a blood pressure, and you want to assess the patient's mental status. If the patient um, has an altered mental status, they, they can't follow commands, you know, hey, squeeze my fingers, they can't do it, you need to initiate temperature control management to protect what's left of their brain. If, you know, if they have an altered mental status, that's gonna lead you to, oh my gosh, there's a there's neurological compromise here, okay? So that's VFib and pulses VTAC. Now, asystole, remember again, never, ever, ever shock asystole. So there's only a few things that we can do for asystole. For asystole, we can still and should obtain IV and IO access. We can put in an advanced airway um we can and uh we will do our compressions for two minutes we will give our epi at the same exact dose so one milligram of epi uh one to ten thousand every three to five minutes and um that's all you can do for asystole you cannot um, shock asystole. You don't give amiodarone to asystole. You just get IVIO access. You put in advanced airway. You do compressions for two minutes and you do epinephrine every three to five minutes. 
and you also consider your H's and T's, H's and T's for asystole and that's pretty much it. If you guys go over this, you review it, you study it, you will be able to pass your, uh, your you know, training for ACLS and you'll be able to use it during an actual cardiac arrest. Hopefully you never need to, but you know, we are medical providers, we're medical professionals, so you just never know. So it's very important for you to know this. I truly, truly hope that this made sense. I hope that you guys have, you can make sense of it. I hope that there's like a rhythm going on here. I, like, I really do hope that this helps you guys in school and in real life. If it does or if it doesn't, because I am not the type of person that is scared of constructive criticism. I actually love constructive criticism. So please do let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you think that I should change. Um, for future teaching videos and on that note if there's anything else that you guys want me to teach please do let me know um, because I do love teaching and at the same token I have so much love and appreciation for you guys I really want to see you guys succeed and grow so if there's anything that I can teach and help you at the same time I'm a happy girl so uh, take care you guys good luck with everything that you're doing and God bless